everybody. Welcome to today's study and our Search of Scriptures study. We are on study number 15 in the book of Judges today. I'm having a little bit of trouble speaking. We'll see how uh, this goes today. We ran, I ran my very first marathon this last Saturday and it was rather chilly, about 35 degrees, and so my throat's a little bit affected by that. Uh, but today we're going to be doing Judges chapter 17 and 18. If you want to get out a Bible and turn, we will answer a couple of different questions uh, from those two chapters. Question one, how would you describe the religion of Micah and of the Danites, and wherein did they fall short of true religion? Second question, a Levite was supposed to be a man who stood in a special relationship to God. What impression have you formed of this particular Levite, and in what respects did he fail to walk worthily of his profession? Okay, let's look at Judges chapter 17 and 18 together. Verse 1. Now a man named Micah from the hill country of Ephraim said to his mother, the eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from you, and about which I heard you utter a curse, I have that silver with me. I took it. Then his mother said, The Lord bless you, my son. And when he returned the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, she said, I solemnly consecrate my silver to the Lord for my son to make an image overlaid with silver, and I will give it back to you. So after he returned the silver to his mother, she took two hundred shekels of silver, and gave them to a silversmith, who used them to make the idol, and it was put in Micah's house. Now this man Micah had a shrine, and he made an ephod and some household gods, and installed one of his sons as his priest. And in those days Israel had no king, every one did as they saw fit. A young Levite from Bethlehem in Judah, who had been living within the clan of Judah, left that town in search of some other places to stay. And on his way he came to Micah's house in the hill country of Ephraim. Micah asked him, Where are you from? I am a Levite from Bethlehem and Judah, he said, and I am looking for a place to stay. Then Micah said to him, Live with me and be my father and priest, and I will give you ten shekels of silver a year, your, for your clothes and your food. So the Levite agreed to live with him, and the young man became like one of his sons to him. And then Micah installed the Levite, and the young man became his priest and lived in his house. And Micah said, Now I know that the Lord will be good to me, since this Levite has become my priest. And in those days Israel had no king, and in those days the tribe of the Danites was seeking a place of their own, where they might settle, because they had not yet come into an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. So the Danites sent five of their leading men from Zorah and Ashtaol to spy out the land and to explore it. And these men represented all the Danites, and they told them, Go explore the land. So they entered the hill country of Ephraim, and came to the house of Micah, where they spent the night. And when they were near Micah's house, they recognized the voice of the young Levite. So they turned in there, and they asked him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? Why are you here? And he told them what Micah had done for him, and said, He has hired me, and I am his priest. Then they said to him, Please inquire of God to learn whether our journey will be successful. And the priest answered them, Go in peace, your journey has the Lord's approval. So the five men left and came to Lysh, where they saw that the people were living in safety like the Sidonians, and at, pe at peace and secure. And since their land lacked nothing, they were prosperous. And also they lived a long way from the Sidonians and had no relationship with anyone else. And when they returned to Zorah and Ashtol, their fellow Danites asked them, how do, you find the, how do you find things? And they answered, Come on, let's attack them. We've seen the land, and it's very good. Aren't you going to do something? Don't hesitate to go there and take it over. When you get there, you will find an unsuspecting people in a spacious land that God has put into your hands, a land that lacks nothing, whatever. Excuse me. Then six hundred men of the Danites armed for battle set out for Zorah and Eshtaol. On their way, they set up camp near Kiriath Jerim in Judah. This, why, this is why the place was called Kiriath Jerim, is called Mahanandan to this day. From there they went on to the hill country of Ephraim and came to Micah's house. And then the five men who had spied out the land of Lysh said to their fellow Danites, Do you know the one who 
that one of these houses excuse me, has an ephod, some household gods, and an image overlaid with silver. Now you know what to do. So they turned in there and went to the house of the young Levite at Micah's place and greeted him. And the six hundred Danites armed for battle stood at the entrance of the gate. And the five men who had spied out the land went inside and took the idol, the ephod, and the household gods, while the priest and the six hundred armed men stood at the entrance of the gate. When the five men went into Micah's house and took the idol, the ephod, and the household gods, the priest said to them, What are you doing? They answered him, Be quiet, don't say a word. Come with us and be our father and priest. Isn't it better that you serve a tribe and a clan in Israel as priest rather than just one man's household? The priest was very pleased. He took the ephod, the household gods, and the idol, and he went along with the people. Putting their little children, their livestock, and their possessions in front of them, they turned away and left. And when they had gone some distance from Micah's house, the men who lived near Micah were called together and overtook the Danites. As they shouted after them, the Danites turned and said to Micah, What's the matter with you that you called out your men to fight? He replied, You took the gods I made and my priest and went away. What else do I have? How can you ask what's the matter with you? The Danites answered, Don't argue with us, or some of the men might get angry and attack you, and your family will lose your lives. So the Danites went their way, and Micah, seeing that they were too strong for him, turned around and went back home. Then they took what Micah had made and his priest and went to Laish against the people at peace and secure. And they attacked them with sword and burned down their city. There was no one to rescue them because they lived a long way from Sidon and had no relationship with anyone else. The city was in a valley near Beth Rehob. The Nanites rebuilt the city and settled there, and they named it Dan after their ancestor Dan, who was born to Israel, though the city used to be called Laish. There the Danites set up for themselves the idol and Jonathan, son of Gershom, the son of Moses, and his sons were priests for the tribe of Dan until the time of the captivity of the land. They continued to use the idol Micah had made all the time the house of God was in Shiloh. Now let's look to question number one. How would you describe the religion of Micah and the Danites, and wherein did they fall short of true religion? Well, Micah and the Danites had fallen into the trap of co-opting the religion around them into their own, the culture around them into their own religion. They had contextualized the worship of Yahweh to the point that it was now unrecognizable. They had adopted the paganism that was around them, and they had become idolaters. And we are in danger of doing much the same thing in our own nation uh, today. Question number two, a Levite was supposed to be a man who stood in a special relationship to God. What impression have you formed of this particular Levite, and in what aspects did he fail to walk worthily of his profession? Well, this Levite sold himself out to the highest bidder rather than remain true to the Word of God. And there are many in our own day that, that are doing the very same thing. The Word of God tells us that such false prophets as these will only increase in numbers in the last days. And we see that that is so true, unfortunately. I hope that uh, the study in Judges is a blessing to you. hope you are learning a lot. I hope that there is a king ruling in your life, and you are not doing what pleases you, but you are doing what pleases the king. If you do that, God will bless you. hope you're having a fantastic day. God bless the rest of your day.